What's happening? Kapos the Wit, aka Malkir here at Big Kitty Games. Let's see if my sound's working. Looks like it's working. Um, well, I was just about to get into uh, working on some skill tree stuff, but looks like the. Sky is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, I messed something up here. And we were messing with this uh, the other day, so not entirely unexpected. Uh, it's a bummer when I push this stuff to live. Because then it goes live immediately. Um, but let's see if we can't wrap our heads around this real quick, fix it up uh, before we move on. So everything looks like it's on as expected. Let's go ahead and jump in game. Take a peek at what's going on in the editor. See if we can see what's up. We were messing with fog. Um, The distant camera uses the Enviro renderer to generate the fog um, in the sky, along with the clouds and everything. Um, hey, Goofy. Uh, this oh, I'm in the beta, so I'm. Um, let's see. I actually want to go to the multiplayer world, so I've got some locations to go around to. How you doing, Goofy? Um, let's see. Okay. Multiplayer world. Well, that is today, isn't it? It's a holiday here in Japan, but... Well, um, they don't really ever show you that anywhere. Windows or Google or anything. Um, I'm actually already at the mountains. This is where I wanted to be. So, well, Claire's sky was flickering a lot worse than I've seen. I might need to run it in the client because that was really bad. And like, yeah, see, it's like it's turning on and off. That's correct when it flickers on. Hmm. Well, let's, I'm not getting that. That's pretty severe. Um, we better check out the client itself. I think they're sealing steel bolts or something outside. They're building a bridge just behind my neighbor's house. A big bridge. And uh, they start at like 7.50 a.m. It's, it's kind of kind of silly. But uh, bolting steel together or something. Well, let's see. It's not doing that for me. Hmm. Um, hmm. Well, I've been doing it for a long time, is all goofy. Um, 
almost nine years now since I first started. Changed the weather as soon as I changed it. It is definitely flickering. You can see the fog color is changing there. But. Not to the degree that Claire is posting there. Hmm, it is definitely flickering though. So in any case, we need to fix that. Um, let's see. Um, it's obviously the fog, and again, the only places that we are changing the fog is in those EnviroSky scripts. About like here, and I don't actually want to look at fog enabled. I want to see these guys. So on post render fog and color, this should set the fog for the near camera because the this is post render. Uh, being used on the distant camera. This is pre-render, where it should be calculating its own sky. It's not actually setting the... fog settings anywhere differently. Render fog, scene mode, fog, fog density. Hmm. It makes use of them, but it's not actually explicitly changing them on pre-render. So you wouldn't expect it to be any different. Um, it is only on the distant camera, though. Hmm. Maybe I should update them viral. It's always a bit of a pain. You do get some performance gains, usually, when you do. Sometimes you have to rewrite your profiles, though. Um, and I am currently running the beta so I should actually switch out back to production probably got some file or another that has changed I need to discard No? Alright. Switch back to production. It's going to want to re-import a bunch of that. Um, so yeah, we were actually looking at different script there. We'll want to... Well, and it wasn't doing that for me in the... Uh, the client anyway. See, the near is not flickering. And that's the basic fog settings. This is the enviro. It's almost like it's going on and off. So we'll just double check that here in the editor. As soon as it finishes compiling.
so it's a bit slower post reimport we switch branches and version control like that um, I think it is set to start up the world yep so it should be in single player should still be at that mountaintop We've still got that debug going off. Yuck. It's not doing it for me. How did that debug make it in there? I need to patch that in like ASAP. So really, um, I thought that we left this as only being necessary on the virus sky rendering post render. I guess we moved it. Um, fog color current fog mod. That wasn't correct. This was the dude here, wasn't it? Well, this is what we turned off, I guess. And it's not quite this one. Get time of day divided by 24. Yeah, I guess that was correct, I suppose. And then we turned off the camera fog. I thought it was all done with this. Last time I was streaming. looked good though, it just was doing the flickering. So I want to save up the hill here. So I have to keep running up here. Still flickering. I don't know why it does that. It's almost like it's doing some kind of frame based calculation for the fog that it's just not quite cutting it. Um see and then once it catches up it's a lot less. So yeah, we don't want to be doing anything here. That's good. We turn that off. Just when Enviro is finished, it's going to toss everything back here. And let's actually look. Uh, there's a... Where's the render fog? Render fog comes here, but it's doing it's doing some funky math here. that I'm not going to be able to <laughs> mess with much. Hmm. 
It's almost like it's turning on and off for her. See, that's correct. She's in clear sky. And then it turns off completely. It's just rendering the plain skybox. Hmm. Why would it do that? All that we did here was turn this guy off. Nothing messing with Enviro Sky rendering himself. He's got the post render settings, but that's not actually what he's using. Did the terrains manager loop somehow? I'm a bit confused by that. Hmm. It's a bummer when you can't see it yourself. It actually says up in the corner there. Win 64, 0 0.25, that's same here, 0 0.25, win 64. Sure not doing that for me though. Um, hmm. The only time that that gets like turned on and off is when we go into a cave and come back out. So I can try that. Sky does look messed up there, doesn't it? Um, where was that? That was... 212 Mountains, I think. Sky looks like it's turned off here. Yeah, well, the sun's working, but the clouds have gone funky. They're not churning on and off, but... It is acting funny. You can see it flickering there. Not as severe as Claire's case. Um. Clouds are working fine. It's not doing the full black on and off that she had. Um. I 
I guess I just didn't really look at it when I went into the cave. Where was that solace at? There it is. I should mark some of those. So I can sort them better. So this changes the fog cave a bit when you come down in here. And then when we go back out, we should still have... Yeah, look at that, the weather's changed. And I mean... What is that? It's just this big gray... I guess that's just the night sky rolling in, but... Hmm. We better peek at that. That's under the terrain manager. Uh, which we were already looking at. Um, turn off surface world and turn on surface world. Why is it doing this twice here? Set weather overwrite, set weather overwrite. That's an if, that's an else. So one of those is going to get called. I want to say that the uh, blending method that's being used is somehow causing that flicker. Totally destroys the clouds when you do that for some reason. Distant camera's getting turned off. That's where our Enviro Sky Rendering script is. 
the Enviro Manager itself is getting turned off. This is for the server. Hmm. Well, let's. Hmm. Let's take a peek at the Current weather is cloudy one. I'm going to go into that mine. Switch to cloudy three right before I went in. Gets turned off. And goes down one, going to cloudy two. So I go... If I do this repeatedly, it's going to keep going down. No? Cloudy two again. It went to cloudy three when I went in, didn't it? Right before I went in? Well, in any case, this whole white ring of the fog is being a bit silly. But that's not the real flickering problem that we're having, that we're seeing Claire have anyway. Set it to well, yeah, it is doing it pretty bad there. It's doing it for me now. And it looks like it is mostly that blending bit for me anyway. Maybe Claire was just getting sort of a severe version of that. Um let's see. So Lightning height 750, that doesn't sound good. I'll have to fix that later. Um, that whole uh, bit where it jumps so fast, I think is this one. Accumulation speed, transition speed. Wetness, snow. Let's turn all of these down. And I think that the method that I use for cheating the change in the console is immediate.
So I don't know when it got to be this black. So we're looking at cloudy two right now, right? Hit a current preset, fogginess. It does have this black, but we're like in the middle of the day. You know, it's almost 10. Yeah, and it's like that all day. Oh, well, there we go. So, if I change it to 6, now it's switched to this spectrum. So, I mean, that really is until noon. That would be really uh, silly if it is. And there it changed sharply, despite... That's kind of what I was looking for. Hmm. This stuff is just so finicky, I don't really even want to do this while I'm streaming. Because it's a lot of uh, trial and error. Keep it down. Um, but I don't want to leave Claire with that problem. If she's got it, someone else is going to have it too. Uh, we're looking at light rain now, whose fog looks like this. So we're over in this spectrum right now. But if I switch to before noon, it gets into this black. I was assuming that this was like nighttime and daytime, but... Looks like this is actually going all the way to noon, so that's really terrible. Um, let's just try and take a peek at midnight, see if it... Switches here, so we're at... 11.40 I guess I'm the one that's setting that too Did go dark there all of a sudden, yeah You do my thing So, that is just not good not nice. Um, I'm pretty sure I've got it written down somewhere. What the actual time of day is. Here we go. Uh, 5.45 to 8. Take a peek at that transition. So we're at 5.30 now. expecting it's more like six okay so six to let's double check eight o'clock too Seven fifty, seven fifty five, mm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that did kind of switch there, didn't it? It's just that this fog is not set up nice at all. Sun has gone down. All right, so um, let's see here. We really just need one, and then we can copy them all over. Um, all that's important is the in distance here. So, well, let's leave clear sky alone for the moment, and then we'll change all the rest of these. So we want to go from... We want to make those transitions less sharp, too. So we want to go 6 to 8. And this is on a scale of 255. It's not actually going to give me a number. Uh, location percentage, okay. So... Um, we're on a 24-hour scale. I could have told you myself that if I thought about it out loud. Um, 0.25 is where we want the darkness to end. So that's right at 25%. Um, and that's actually right where we want it to turn off. So let's say before we did that, um, I'm going to have to reopen it to look at that. What's the blend difference here? Uh, it's about three or four. About four. Um, so let's go to 20, not 25, but 23%. And it did look like it was doing that instantly. Well, that was this jump here, wasn't it? So yeah. Um, we'll go 23 to 27-ish. Does that make sense? And then we'll want to move this down to, what, uh, 20 o'clock? Eighty-three percent. So let's go to... 81% and then we're going to actually want to copy these so we're going to need another one here at uh, 845 one up here at 85 and this one we're going to do alpha 255 and I don't know, yeah I guess black is night time so this will be our day, that will be scaling a bit into the sunset, I guess, and then we'll have our night zone here. So let's see how well that works. Um, I don't think this actually is at 255, it's showing me that, but it's not, oh, 225 was it? So I was looking at that wrong. But this guy is at 240. Um, let's put another one here at 240 maybe. We'll put this one at 225. And this guy is just black, right? Zero, zero, zero. This guy is just black too. Zero, zero, zero. So that's fine if we've got this guy at black. Okay. Copy that onto whoops onto the rest of these. I kind of want the foggy fog to be a little, uh, 
A little more dense, right? We'll check that out though, see what it looks like. Can mess with that as necessary. For the most part, we just want the timings on these all to be fixed up. Heavy snow, even at night, is generally not pitch black as well. Light rain, light snow. And again, the indifference for all of these is very different. So when um, even on those long range renders, um, the point at which there's no more land, it'll draw, they'll all draw the same color now. But um, like the floating islands, for example, will be drawn at a very different color. We'll let those distant lands, there we go. I think we want to go back to that other uh, spot actually. Um, where is that solace? That other mountain place was better. I don't know if it was this one. Yeah, this is a good spot. I used to be over here. Now I'm over here, so there's a gap that's been generated right there. Okay, so um, we want to look at those transitions now. So I'm at 5.30, um, we're expecting it to be blending. See there, I made a sharp jump again. 5.45. But the fog is slowly brightening up. Is that something on my screen? Nope, there's this red sparkly down there. The color transition looks a lot better there. Um, except for that 545 jump. Let's look at our... What was it? Uh, this should already be transitioning towards night. Oh no, this is only 7 o'clock. Sorry. Was that correct though? No, that was correct, wasn't it? Approaching 8 o'clock here. The weather just changed, so that made it jump a little bit. Slowly getting darker, still doing that flickering a bit though. Um, hey Art, thought I was done with fog, but Claire posted a problem in chat, so now I'm back to working on fog again, it is looking better, let me switch scenes here real quick. Tweak those settings. Um, maybe I'll do like just 0 0.1 for now. Um, yeah, I think actually 0 0.5 is pretty good. And we want this to be higher than that. Temperature we're not using. Yeah, it looks like her uh, sky was just churning off and on somehow. 
I haven't actually been able to replicate that. Um, but that we were kind of messing with that stuff though, so I changed uh, a, a few things. And things are looking better, and they're not. Uh, let's see, 840. I kind of want to see the weather change naturally. Still, this kind of white halo that bothers me. I think that's supposed to be the sun going down. Which I guess is expected. Nine o'clock. Yeah, it does look a lot better. So I want to double check here the midnight transition now, which should be gone. Um, Pretty much just pitch black now, so you can't see anything there. Um, and then let's double check that. Five o'clock shenanigans. Right at 5.45 it seems to do a shift there. Where the lights come on. Is looking a lot better though. Um, and I turned the transition speed down drastically. So you can see the clouds slowly fading away as the sun comes up. And I do believe it is not flickering like it is. Like I say, I think the flickering that was going on was mostly. The math just using too big numbers, even though it should have just been. I mean, maybe there's a built-in fluctuation in the code that I'm not aware of. But in any case, um, current weather, let's set you to, for example, cloudy one. You should see now that it's slowly the clouds are coming up rather than just an instant shift, which is a lot better. And I should have done that a long time ago. Um, in any case, it's not doing that flickering that it was. So I'm tempted to export this and patch it in right away. Doesn't really explain <laughs> tornadoes. Could have a tornado. Yeah. Just not enough, not enough man hours. Those rain clouds still slowly dissipating. That does look a lot more interesting. That's still pretty fast. What if I turn that down even more? See, now the fog just changes, like, immediately. It's not doing it like it says here. But... What are you, you going to do? Let's check out Foggy. Yeah, see, it just jumps on there all of a sudden. 
Mm. Well, like I say, this will all work even better when I actually just am editing these numbers directly. Right now I'm relying on this system here, which it's basically just coded, uh, where is it? It's the weather manager. Basically it just rolls a random weather preset every once in a while. And then it changes this like I'm doing here manually with these buttons here. So it, it makes these sharp jumps. Um, and that's actually a bit too slow. I can't even see the clouds forming here anymore. At 0 0.1. See, there, they're just coming on. If you turn that down to one, well, it's not too bad, is it? Probably just take them a minute to come on. But yeah, anyway, um, well, maybe we should just do that now. Hmm? Should we try it out? Um, let's see. Okay, I'm going to save this as is. Oh, and we didn't actually change on, kind of on purpose, but let's go ahead and put this fog like the rest of them, too, so they're timed properly. Like so. Doing okay, kitty? Kitty fight. 10 o'clock break time, I'm going to ignore it. <coughs> The boys be mean to you. Hmm. I kind of want to export this, but yeah, I shouldn't do that. Um, well, mm -hmm. so far. Uh, someone else is having it too. Yeah, Mike Bob. I've seen this guy. Hmm, yeah. Let's go ahead and export a patch. Um, I don't need to change the server, but um, I'm going to have to anyway. Hmm. Um, if I don't change these settings, I don't have to, so let's go ahead and not. And I'm just going to do Windows for now. Oh, and he, this guy says he did post them on the bug tracker. Did I miss it? 187? Oh, he added it to a completely unrelated bug, which is a bummer. I wonder if the settings are a bit different from on my computer or something. Yeah. 
I'll spend a day picking them all out, making them into their own posts. Inset field of history. I wonder if there isn't some kind of video setting that I have set up different than Claire that is causing this to not happen on my computer. Oh, now it's doing it. Wasn't doing it last time I checked. It's weird. So yeah, it's not the uh, it's not the clouds. It's just the fog is turning on and off. Okay, so it's not the whole script. It is the even the clouds are doing the flicker though, which is supposedly fixed um, with this. So we'll try this client. As soon as this is done patching, or uh, exporting, I should say, which does take a minute. And if this works, I will patch it in right away. I think it might have just been that update function in the on the camera fog script that got left over there. I thought about setting up a thing to do that to, I think it was, what was it, America Online or something? I had a grudge against some company back in high school. I was going to do that, just set up a school batch file to send out a complaint email once every five minutes. So we just updated this version. It's going to load the same save, so I should be in the same location looking at the same sky. <laughs> yeah, that's cats for you. I need to build a cat tower. I need to improve some of our cat steps, too. We've got cat steps on our wall. They're falling off. So... Is this the same weather? This looks like pure overcast. Cloudy looks fine. Why did it uh, load as all white like that? Hmm. I'm going to cycle through all of the different weathers and see if I can't figure out what that white was. Um, well, it looks like Cloudy 2 is super... Super white. That is not cloudy. That's just like blinding, heavenly power. Uh, 
Um, three is not like that, but the clouds are just really bright, I guess, is the problem. Clouds are crazy bright. Like, the bloom on that is nuts. Which is fine if the sun's right behind it, but not when, like, I mean, that's not natural. Is it the sun that's too big? What's going on here? Yeah, this hurts my eyes too. It's way too bright. Hmm. Is it doing that in here as well? Uh, it wasn't doing the flickering anymore though. So hopefully that is all fixed. Let's just try and tone down this bloom a bit. Don't want to recreate the uh, realism of the pain of looking at the sky. Yeah, it is like that here. It's just way too bright. Um, let's see. Unity's going to force me to reboot now or restart it. Because it's a fussy editor like that. It's actually, it's, like I say, it's something to do with my project that causes that, I believe, but after I export, it always makes me reload. Does it make you, s like, accept the user agreement anywhere? I forget. How that works. Does Steam just say that you need to read it yourself? I'm pretty sure it doesn't ever actually bring it up. There is a uh, end user license agreement with the game. Clouds are too bright, and there's settings for that all as well. And we're using the fog. Fog shouldn't affect... All that I've messed with is the fog. Fog shouldn't be messing with the cloud brightness. No, I, I did have someone once that read it and said uh, what if your game destroys my hard disk this clause says you can't be held accountable for that and I was like well I mean how would you hold me accountable for that you can't write a program that breaks a hard disk you know unless I was just like a virus spamming the disk as fast as possible and even then it wouldn't break of course, you know, that would wear it out faster than normal, but Steam wouldn't allow a game like that to just sit on, yeah, that too. Lots of stuff. It was a silly argument, but I mean, you know, they're just, they're kind of nasty, the end user license agreements. It's like, we won't take responsibility for anything ever under any circumstance, but you kind of have to say that nowadays, you know, it's, people get weird. 99% of the people don't get weird, but every once in a while someone gets weird and tries to cheat. Did you hear, uh, what was it, Cyberpunk 2077, uh, the company Red Project or whatever, they got hacked, and hackers are putting out all their source code today. Um, but at the same time, it's like, well, how is that going to benefit anyone? They tried to hold them ransom for money. And then they said they wouldn't give them any money. So they said, all right. They dumped their code out, apparently. But nobody's going to be able to make any use of that. I don't I don't understand the point of that. And I don't understand why you can't track people down like that. And like, if, how are they going to get the money? Isn't that traceable? Shouldn't you be able to say, okay, here's your money, and then go arrest them? I don't, I don't really get that, but what do I know? I'm just a care bear. Um, which is what they call us in PvE players and EVE, Care Bears. 
So the current weather we're looking at here is going to be. Can you stop bouncing, dude? Um, we're looking at cloudy two and direct light intensity as a setting. Doesn't look like it's quite what we were looking for, nor does that. Uh, did not want you to jump back there. What are we at? Cloudy 2? I think it just switched off of Cloudy 2, actually. Or was it Cloudy 3 that was so bright? Yeah, Cloudy 3 is too bright. Oh, no, that's actually opening sky. It was cloudy too, wasn't it? I guess the sun has changed position a little bit. Might need to move it back to... where it was. Now they're super dark. Did I? I probably messed up that uh, cloud sitting there, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Okay, so this guy was over here. Um, and that does look actually like the setting that we're looking for. Um, I was just trying to see what it was before I clicked on it. But anyway, that does look like we want. And it's fading slowly, so I just got to wait for it for a second to kind of even out. Let's, uh, let's see what the other ones are at. Clouds, 1 and 0.8. Here we've got 1 and 0.9. 1.9, so yeah, this guy was just up too high. 1.8, that looks better. It's still pretty darn bright, though, like over here where the sun is. Let's go down to like 0.5. Well, it's definitely a lot better. Oh yeah, that's brightening up. Brightening up again. What did we move it to? Cloudy 3. So should we turn this down to 0.8 and 0.7 maybe? That is super bright. Point five. Yeah, I think there's a cat walking around outside. One of my cats is freaking out. Hold on. Might actually be the mother of one of my cats, which is a terrible thought, but uh, we picked him up in our garden, abandoned and dying, so he doesn't get to go outside. If I go too severe with this, it's going to start getting a little weird, I think, but... That does look better. It's not so blinding. It's probably still shifting a bit. 
let's uh, temporarily um, not the preset temporarily let's turn the transition stuff um, back up and this won't save mm -hmm. but it should make my changes much faster and again we're looking at cloudy 3 right now and that does look better let's switch to cloudy 4 um, and again I, I'm gonna mess with these here in a minute so we don't need to worry about this too much. Cloudy 4 is at 1.5 and 0.9. He looks fine. I mean, it's still super bright up there. So what happens if I turn this down to 0 0.5, 0 0.4? They get a lot darker. But they still look great. Uh, maybe not super great, though. It was at 1.5 and 0.9. 1.5 and 0.9. Yeah, that does look more cloudy. But uh, it's just some of those... It's just the overcast that gets out of control. Like there's no underbelly. It just makes the whole thing... Super... Super bright. Which is what happens with cloudy too. And I turn this one way down. It gets that funky blue color too. Domo. Huh? That's that's weird. Um kind of want to turn the but yeah like I said this this really doesn't matter um I did turn it down it's a lot better uh, uh the sun is I can't even tell where the sun is let's move it back to where it was just to double check what we were looking at here yeah and it's still bright but um, a lot better, and this is actually all cloud, even though it's got that blue color, which kind of weirds me out. Ambient color intensity. Yeah, because that's more what overcast looks like. Shouldn't be so blue. Um, I actually like that a lot better. It's still really blue over there, even though these are all clouds. But I, you know, I just don't want to fuss on this forever. If I turn it down, it too far it turns into rain clouds for some reason um, let's put it at point three ish could it be a setting where people can set some of that themselves yeah I mean we could um, I was thinking I might go and spend 20 minutes here and actually um, upgrade this to not use these presets, but actually my own uh, custom system, which would only take 20, 30 minutes. Um, and in that case, we could make settings for them to let players funk with it. Or even like, you know, a weather control or item or something. Um, but in any case, this is looking a lot better so that overcast isn't so blaring bright let's export this once more just for windows and patch it and hope that that fixes the problem that uh, Claire and uh, um, Mike Bob are having Mike Bob is Michael Bobzinski so yeah, it's Mike Bob. Um, here on the server. But so basically what I can do is just actually have only one of these that we're going to use. And then I'll edit this directly via script in runtime. We can actually do that while 
this exports. Um, so let's start writing that because we're going to have to wait three or four minutes here anyway. So, um, basically, we'll just get something started here. And we want to do enviro dot. Thought it was just enviro sky. Sorry, enviro sky dot instance dot, and I believe it's called weather prefab current active weather prefab, or is it preset prefab? This is an Enviro weather prefab. We'll call it fab. And now I believe that this has in it. Hmm, effect systems list particle system. No, this isn't quite what I wanted. Is it emission rates? Enviro weather prefab. Not what I was expecting. So it must be the preset. Preset dot, here we go. So this is all of those settings that are in there. And so the main ones that we're going to want to actually be working with are clouds config. That's its own thing. Okay, well mark that for something we need to work with fog density um, preset dot unity's hogging up all my power stream probably glitched a little bit there uh, preset dot fog distance um, yes Preset dot, oops. Okay, that's already done. Let's take a peek. Less blaring, still a little too bright, but we'll we'll mess with that. Um, and not flickering. And Mike Bob was saying it was mostly happening at night, so let's just take a peek. Um, but I think we have fixed those problems. Actually, is looking a lot better. Um, so, let's go ahead and patch this in. Um, I don't think that I can show any of this stuff. So, forgive me for a moment here while I do some of this. I'm going to have to open up the content builder steam command. This is for logging in and pushing changes. Got my steam authenticator on my phone to make sure that Nobody can log in but me. And then I want to do run app build. Um, 
and we're gonna we've got scripts set up to handle all of this for us so we're pushing the normal build number zero um, I'm gonna leave it here but I'm gonna just add a number two here so I know what I'm doing when I get to that um, it did not change the actual virgin number at all um, so that will upload this here Please, in the future, if you could limit each, um, what are they called, issue? Helps to keep track of open and close bugs. Helps to better keep track of open and closed bugs. I'll leave this one open though, uh, waiting on confirmation from you or Claire that the patch has fixed the problem. So it has uploaded properly, so I'm going to quit out of the Steam uploader. And I'm going to go to Depot Management in the Steamworks settings, or Build Management, I guess, and push hyphen 2 to default. Uh, 3.6 megabyte patch. Steam's so good about that. Start Steam to get the patch to trigger. Gracias. Um, not actually going to put, uh, well, so and then there's this new little thing that uh, I can show you this, can I? Um, I think I'm not actually supposed to show the Steamworks dashboard. Like, like literally Steam says don't show this, so I'm, I'm not gonna. But uh, they put a new thing out where when you change builds, you can actually write a tiny little patch. Um, let's go ahead and try this. I just I don't know what it's going to do. Well, I'm not even connected to Steam, so uh, when you log into the... Uh, Steam command there disconnects you from Steam. So, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not going to try this right now, but they added some new fancy stuff. But, uh, anyway, so I'm going to have to log back into Steam. And it's going to make me write my password, which it's, you can't see on screen, so that's fine. And I don't think there's any harm in showing my where to go? It's not giving me my confirmation. Hello? What happened? There it is. I don't think uh, anybody could make any use of that even if I showed it, but oh, that isn't quite right. Well, yeah, this says it's from four minutes ago.
Still clear is typing. Hmm. I didn't get a patch either. Hold on a second. This isn't showing me again here. What's going on? Did I not? I push it to the wrong build or something? Default. Not getting it either. Well, that's strange. Did I miss something up there? Is this not triggering? I didn't push Linux, but <coughs> I pushed Windows and it shows uh, 3.6. Megabyte change. Well, the other thing you can do is verify the integrity, and you just this tends to find if it needs to patch or not. But it didn't show up. Huh, that's weird. Well, that's very strange. <coughs> I guess I will. There should be no reason for me to need to export Linux as well. I don't know, it's been weird. I'll try it out again. Sorry for 
sorry for this, and I can't even see you chat. Um, while I'm doing this. I guess I'll just call this number three for now, so I know again what uh, what's going on here. It's gonna scan the content. Steam creates really handy uh, file mapping. It has really handy file mapping software, so it'll go through all of the data, um, and it will just locate the changes. So within the four gigabytes, it only actually needs to patch three megabytes. It is uploading something, but it finished almost immediately. I wouldn't expect it to find any changes or upload anything different. And then I'm changing the default build so that it points to these new uploads. And then when you log in, it's supposed to recognize that you're on a slightly different version and download a patch. So here I'm going to switch it default branch to. Yeah, and there's no no change detected. It looks like it didn't do anything there. It went back to hyphen 2 for some reason, even though I just changed it to hyphen 3. Um, I'm just going to... i got no connection again on Steam now, of course, because I logged in, so I have to reboot. They might have a bug in their new uh, patch note thingy. I guess if there's no change detected, it doesn't even want to push it. Well, shoot. This is not going... This usually is... Uh, I've actually never had it do this to me. Um, but I don't think I've ever tried to just push a change to Windows. I always have uh, Windows and... What not build, so I guess we'll go ahead and do a full patch. It's just that that takes a while. It's a bummer. I guess we can work on some stuff while it does that, though. This is a fancy little tool here that will get these all going for me. 
So I'm going to start that up and the cats are freaking out again. When stray cats go by, sometimes they get all riled up and end up fighting each other. So anyway, we're going to have to wait again for this to go off for a bit. So in the meantime, um, let's work on this. Uh, it's probably going to interrupt me and reload the whole thing. We'll see. Might piss me off, but... What are you going to do? So I think clouds config is its own thing there. Fog, we do want. Uh, is lightning storm, we will want that. Um, so I guess, yeah, we should write that down. Lightning interval. Oops. What else do we got? Moon intensity. Not using the possibilities. Shadow intensity, sky, fog, snow level, summer, spring, temperature, weather, fog mod. We might need some of that. Winter, winter day. Weather, fog mod. Man, everybody's playing Valheim right now. Good on them for a successful launch. Uh, weather fog mod. We can probably just edit that directly. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll write that down. I think that's the main fog color. That's the lightning storm. Where's the, uh, I guess, yep, yeah, what is it? The, uh, rain stuff is probably actually in the prefab, isn't it? Not seeing rain. So, yeah, we're going to need the prefab as well. This is prefab. We'll call it prefab. Um, dot effect emission rates. That's a list of floats. So I'll have to... I wonder where it actually manages those. Maybe we can take a peek at that. Um, the systems themselves are in here. Those are the particle systems, and it's just controlling them by order, I guess. Um, let's see if we can't peek at that inside of its own stuff. emission rate, so it's just gonna it's 
it's just going to set it directly there. So I'm just going to need to know the order that those are in. Um, and this is basically just grabbing it, setting the rate over time. going to reload. Uh -huh. uh, it's just going to throw everything away. Oh no, it kept it. Okay. Did it auto save that? It's always weird when it does that because it's not going to work if it, I mean, is it trying to recompile that right now? Well, I guess I can't really work on this stuff while it's running. A million sales? Really? Wow. Yeah, it, it blew up like crazy. I mean, it's a really good game. So, um, understandable. And they've got a nice publisher and they had a great uh, intro and all that. Boats. Hope I didn't break my own patch there. Wonder how many people they have on their team. What was it? Iron Gate Studios? Unity's bogging all my stuff down. SE, where is that? Sweden. So is this their only title? I keep seeing these Steam Friends pop-ups. Somebody's playing Valheim. Somebody's playing Valheim. Um, Two million to five million owners estimated on Steam Spy at $20 a pop. That is the dream right there. I was kind of surprised it was uh, Coffee Stain Studios and um, that's their whole company PDF. That's not what I wanted to see. Two industry veterans in Sweden. That's not much of a company profile, but... Sounds like a two-man team. Good on them. I don't even know what this is. What is this? Trending now on Steam. Firework. Action RPG.
how to work on this without breaking everything. I'll just get something going here. So, basically, there's a number of variables that we'll need to be editing, and that's all good and well. Um, long story short, though, what we're going to be doing is and I've actually kind of already set this up. Oh, and did Unity just finish there for me? Right on time. I just need to export the server as well since the numbers have changed. Unfortunately. Oh, did Steam, I guess it just took a minute. Claire said it's working for her now. I think it did spot a patch. Yeah, it's doing it now. Huh, okay, well, we can get back to what we were doing then. So I don't actually want to patch in this other version. Cool. Just uh, bogged down a little bit, I guess. So, let's put that away. Because um, we didn't actually change anything. We were just re-exporting it. Um, and that would force us to also have to reboot and patch the server and this and that. So, I'm just going to close this down and reboot it. Now that uh, we've finished patching or exporting because it always forces a restart there so could be steam systems are out of control though they've got so much money that, uh, I mean it's not I'm sure it's not cheap it's not terribly expensive though but uh, there's definitely some big time background data management they've got going on to have I think there's over 20,000 games on Steam and uh, all the data, all the patches, all the downloads and everything for all of that yeah I saw uh, last night Steam actually launched in China. But because the Chinese government is so strict that they only have 53 games available on Steam. But of course, Counter-Strike is one of them. Counter-Strike and DOTA2, all the Valve games that they managed, they were able to you know file for government acceptance. I think it's just something you have to get approved based on cultural content or something like that. But of course, you know, 99.9% .9 of developers don't even know that and aren't going to take the steps to get that approval. So anyway, now we can actually do this. Um, we are still on production though, so... Let's go ahead and... push these changes, switch to beta, and yeah, let's not mess with the weather system right now. It's something I'll do here someday, but uh, it's just not what we need to do right now. Um, it'll be nice, it'll be more fluid, and just the fact that I even turned down the uh, transition rates there, um, stuff will be looking a lot smoother now, and I fixed the fog color timings and some stuff, so... 
Um, weather should, in general, be looking quite a bit better now. Um, but we don't actually need to... Yeah, so that'll be working better. We don't actually need to fill in the uh, full custom weather system yet. And again, it'll only take, you know, I, even if I say it'll only take 20 minutes, it's going to take two hours when you actually get into it and start testing it. Yada, yada, yada. Um, so let's not do that right now. Let's get back to what we were doing so we can push the most recent changes. We want to get the goblin dungeons and all of that goody stuff out into the public domain. So I'm not going to use you anymore. Um, let's just do, this was a quick little hot fix. Number 26. Um, fixed weather flickering. Um, improved weather coloring. And Weather fog cloud coloring, fixed weather flickering. That's fair. Push that all into version control and switch to beta. And now what we can do that we're in beta is actually pull in the changes that we made on to the weather stuff so we don't have to change them again and we'll get a merge conflict or two but usually nothing serious uh, build settings we're going to use mine procedural prefabs Just the debug is different. Um, let's see. We'll go ahead and use theirs, which means production, since we're currently on beta. Beta would be mine. Player nutrition. This is the most recent changes. Just kind of the same, but somebody reported that it wasn't actually working properly in beta so let's go ahead and use theirs do you still have a debug in there that's not good player inventory what's all of this let me come back to that global water we do want to use theirs Uh, these guys to Mason and Masonry skill templates. I didn't show oh, meta. Uh, we don't need those. Yeah, that's why. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Can't use theirs. Can't use mine. Um, yeah, just discard that. doesn't matter. You're not even going to let me discard it? Come on. I just have to re-import it. Still gonna give me that? Hmm. I can't use theirs and I can't use mine. And I can't use discard. Because it's not gonna let me change it. <sighs> Always something. Unity has closed.
start, we want to use mine. Game settings, we want to use mine. I've never actually had it bring metafiles up. I thought metafiles were supposed to be ignored. Item database, this is mostly the same. But let's go ahead and use theirs since it was working properly. And then what's going on here? Container, linked container, inventory slot. Just got rid of a debug in there, got rid of a debug in there, got rid of a debug in there. Everything else is actually the same. So we can go ahead and use theirs. Now we're just down to these guys. You can go ahead and move them, I don't care. They'll just regenerate. Why is this still locked? I even tried to just remove it. Just get rid of it. Why is that not updating? I don't even have a mason.meta. I already removed it. I already removed it. Stop. It's always something, you know. You just want to get focused and do your work. And something's got to just throw a wrench in the plans. Give you a hard time. Show an explorer. Mm -hmm. Don't even know how to do that. Because I was just there, wasn't there. Use my handy ACDC. Nothing there. Resources, skill templates, crafting, mason.meta. So you're going to make me pull it out of the recycle bin. It's not in the recycle bin. There's nothing there. Source tree, what are you doing? Stop tracking. Have a good one, Art. All right, so there we go. Just forcing, ignoring it. Okay, now we're back on beta. Let's get back to some skill tree stuff. I want to move some armor, uh, tailoring and leatherworking onto the skill tree for starters. And we might even just make up some new armors. Um, primarily so we can get some buttons on there. And we also want to get some sockets on there. Um, it's already past 11. Like I said, you 
think you're going to be doing one thing, and then something else shows up. Done with you, done with you, done with you. You guys have caused me nothing but trouble today. Um, we've got some random errors. Player crafting. All right, what's going on here? I pulled in the wrong item database, didn't I? That's all right. Um, we did want the other changes. I just accidentally removed um, what is this? It's just not pushed. Um, scripts, items, item database. I accidentally removed this and these guys. So I actually want to reverse that. as well as the hunk beneath that. These guys I want to stay the same. Yeah, those are all... Hmm? That's good. Those I don't need. I deleted all of that, but anyway, that stuff's all fine. I just need this hunk back here. Sockets in there too. Yeah, that's the main one. 336. Are you reversing it? I just clicked on that. Did you reverse it? It did. Okay, so that should recompile and fix all of that. Okay, let's close source control down and get back to it. You are a single dungeon test. Good, good, good. All right, so uh, let's put it back up, take a peek. I think I had some... No, maybe not. Had some ideas for stuff that we wanted to get going. I do need some new icons still for some of the current sockets, and that debug is still going off. How did this not get turned off? Source control, version control, what are you doing? Now I had to go check on that. How come these aren't updated? What are you doing? None of these are fixed. What's going on?
don't know why this is like that, but anyway. Um, it is storing the assets. Did you not merge those in here? It says that you did. Why did they not take change? I'm on the beta. I pulled them in. What's going on? I'm looking at them. They're no different. Freaking me out here. Well, this is the fun of game development. Everything's easy when it goes your way. But it very rarely goes your way. So... I'm going to switch back to production. I'm going to double check that those files are properly intact. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to switch back to beta. I'm going to put peek at them again. And if they're not set up as they're supposed to be, I'm going to overwrite them. Um, they are located in How did this what is this green branch doing here? What's going on with that? I don't know why that created that. It's confusing me. Uh, core, profiles, weather presets, here they are. So, switch back to production. Not sure why it's on this random green branch, but whatever. We're going to need to re-import those changes from beta. Which it's trying to do right now. Just doesn't want us to watch it. Unable to what? That was weird. Still loading. Recompiling. Can't click on anything until it finishes. Always takes an extra few seconds after switching branches. There we go. Cloudy, fog, set up proper. Everything looks fine. No errors. I'm going to copy all of you. Shouldn't be any changes to file status. Should be able to switch back to beta. Beta should be unquestionably incorporating all those changes. 
as we can see right here, showing changes. I'm going to re-import them. I wonder if my copy-paste method isn't actually what I needed to do there. Control-C maybe just creates a reference to those files, and now Source Control has switched them back. It's totally not what it's supposed to do. But let's see if I can... Yeah, I probably should have moved those out to a different uh, different folder, shouldn't I have? I don't actually need to re-import everything in Unity to do that. Um, for example... Just create folder on the desktop or wherever. We'll wait for this to finish and everything here is not updated for whatever reason so I'm gonna close you I'm gonna switch back to production I'm not actually gonna open unity and re-import everything I'm just gonna switch and I'm gonna copy all of these out to here and now I'm gonna switch back And Unity should not really have any complaint with any of that. And we can see that these are still not working as intended, so I'm going to copy them from my copies, paste them back over here. And let's take another peek at them. And now they are all working as expected. So, not sure what the deal is with that. Source control is apparently not making proper use of that um, I'd like to check out the git ignore very much grabbing all of those and it shouldn't have been grabbing those meta files but I guess yeah no that's not true but it should be grabbing those asset files I don't know why I didn't push those properly but in any case we fixed it for now so okay moving on finally Let's peek at, and we can get rid of this, and we can move to our sprites folder, it's items, and we still have some things here that we haven't actually given good socket images to. So what we want to do most of all is... We want to add some more to these two in particular. Smithing's got a few on there. I'm going to add some things here, I believe. Um, woodworking's got some stuff on it too. We would like to add more there as well. Masonry now at least has some stuff on it. And I've got some ideas for stuff to add here too. These are kind of the hardest too though, tailoring and leatherworking. Um,
There's still a bit of a flicker at um, 5.45 and I think it was 8 o'clock. So I'm gonna make some sockets, and I think I'm going to add uh, the basic sets to all of these. So in order to craft fancy armors, you're going to have to um, get some points into these trees. So I think these should get bumped over here, and we'll put the other ones on here but uh, that brings up the question then if you're gonna go to crafting you're gonna go to smithing mm, you are still gonna have tools aren't you um, and there's quite a few you know there's there's certainly ways to get club and dagger and all of this stuff Pretty much should just have all of this, really, um, on the skill trees. So, say you start out with Dagger 1, and you want to level up using that and some other things. Um, kind of in short really what I want to be doing is what's up shark I want to be moving non-resource kind of stuff um, off of here And on to the item template systems. I do use mirror, yes. Um, I think that is actually under player crafting that I just closed. Where we've got our get known recipe bits. So, like, torch is fine. Uh, simple hood we want to leave there those are simple so five doesn't actually matter for them stone we want to leave all of that campfire's fine yes we have both dedicated servers and uh, player hosting i think player hosting has some problems because it's usually not the common approach i haven't really looked at that enough to be honest um, i should give that some time here in the near future Storage chest, wall, ground bed, small boat, reading vat. This is all fine. Tithering station. I really like how Valheim does the uh, crafting table upgrades too. I've been th thinking about how to do that for a long time. And they, they took a neat approach to that. Where you put down a second, sort of like a optional crafting station next to the main crafting station. You don't actually ever interact with the optional one but the main crafting station checks to see if that's there and if it's there then you've got a crafting station level two instead of level one that's pretty nice reading that tanning um i was actually looking for the basic armor sets i guess i did already move those down I'm confused on all the networks, so for example, your game, what is the server tick rate transport, and is your game server authoritative? Game server is absolutely authoritative. Um, tick rate um, can mean some different things, depending on what sort of networking approach you're using. 
um, my servers run at I believe uh, 25 frames per second um, let's see multiplayer network manager um, no I think it's actually under start UI which is the first script that really the game ever runs um, start UI if we are in batch mode I don't remember where it is actually. Um, target frame rate is what I'm talking about. And I just set this to be. Console, FPS, FPS, Net Manager. Oh, yeah. Well, this is kind of a silly way of doing it, but. Um, basically, one frame per physics tick, which is every 0 0.2. So 50 frames, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, the server tick rate uh, is important if you are using a lockstep uh, approach, which is where you have one player sending an update. Like this is how StarCraft II works. So if one player says, I'm issuing this command at this frame, um, that goes to the server and then another player wants to issue a command at that same frame the server will actually wait for the player to give a report and the server will say i don't have any commands for that frame or maybe they do and it waits until it has collected all of the commands it, it's gotten a, an update from all players that it needs to know about before it moves on with its decision making um, and Solace Crafting does not do that. Um, it's just an open-ended system, so it's just ping-based. Um, so uh, the only thing that the actual tick rate is doing um, is specifying how fast uh, the frames are being calculated by the server. When you connect four players in your game, every player that joins in the network transform of the player becomes choppier and larger. To use custom network transform, network animator. Um, I don't use custom network transform. I don't use the mirror network animator. Um, I use my own animation updates. which is just basically um, stuff like this, the client RPCs. So if the player dies on the server, the server sends out an RPC to everyone that's observing the player to make that player die. Every player that joins, oh, every player that joins it, the network transform of the player becomes choppier and larger. Uh, I use telepathy transport, which I don't actually, I have not changed a single line of code in that. Uh, that's one of the main transport built into Mirror. And they actually have a couple different ones that they offer. Um... Uh, 
they've got apathy is their other big one. Apathy and I use telepathy. Um, telepathy, I believe, is the default transport. Um, what that actually uses, I believe it's primarily UDP. But uh, like I say, I haven't actually gotten into the code at all. What's the problem though? I mean, that all looks fine. You can't get super, super perfect, um, you know, unless you're running it. Zero ping with no compression updating the actual animation state every frame and you can't do that nobody nobody would do that um, there is I forget what it's called, smooth network something or other. A lot more stuff called smooth than I expected. Um, not 3D, not, I believe it's tools. Smooth sync, I think it is. Yeah. This is a widely used sort of alternative plugin. That uh, it basically just uses prediction math, um, which you can write yourself to and whatnot. But I don't actually use this. Um, this is highly recommended, though, by other people. Oh, yeah, I, I haven't actually ever played with this. Um was recommended to me. But uh, Mirror changes very frequently. They update daily almost because there's people actively working on it. What's the matter, kitty? Um, your video looked pretty good there though I don't didn't really honestly see anything terribly wrong with it um, like I say it's not perfect if you're looking at them side by side but you can't tell when you're playing, you know, you don't stare at someone else and judge their animations generally. Uh, making the game fun is much more important. So this stuff is currently all set to be known by default. And I'm thinking that I can change these to not be known by default. Um, yeah, it's easy to get caught up on stuff like that, but uh, um, I would try n not to focus on optimization too much, you know, unless it's a real game breaker. Um, can be learned smithing it's 
skill tree tier zero. Let's put all of these on there too. Not known by default. I don't use server authority for movement. That's the only thing that players are allowed because it, it does... It, there's just no real clean way to do that with someone that's got 150 ping, you know? If you're running zero ping, it's not a problem. Um, it's still a little choppy. But uh, that's the only thing that I let players do, is they control their own movement. Um, and then they just send that to the server, and the server sends that out to everybody else. Because, yeah, having, having requesting to move and then giving the okay to move back to the player, it, it creates this bit of slow acceleration that's really annoying and kind of unavoidable uh, this is leather working normal crafting yeah and it does open up the door for speed hacks you know and you, you could put in a uh, some basic checks to watch for that if that was a problem but you know that's only if, if you're selling millions of copies and people are running dedicated servers and this and that. Um, and then the other one is cloth. Not known by default. Can be not be unlocked can be learned um, tailoring that is crafting skill tree zero did the leather dudes have where'd leather go they don't have unlocked I don't know why that was checked for cloth anyway um, so that will move everything out of known by default and onto the tier zero skill tree there and I also want to look at the skill templates for crafting and how come leatherworking is not here okay so these have not been set up here they're all hard coded in script skill template generator crafting like this and I want to move this guy um Tier. Yeah, I want to move this guy over to tier one. I want to move this guy over to tier one. And I want to move these guys over to tier one as well. And let's see what that looks like in game. Um, the other way to do server authoritative movement would be to actually let the client move the visual object, um, sending a timestamp to the server about when they pushed their input button. And then the server would have to weigh that math against its own current uh, time stamp. So say it gets it 0.7 seconds later, or, you know, it wouldn't be that much, 0.1 seconds later, it would then evaluate that the movement should have started 0.1 seconds ago, meaning that the player had already accelerated to some certain amount at this direction, and then send that update out to players. And then client side, you can then assume by now we've lost 0.2 seconds, so it's going to interpolate some acceleration rather than just teleport up to where it's supposed to be right now and this and that you know and that's that's kind of what that smooth sync stuff is supposed to do is it just interpolates based on your current time frame um, or time stamp based on what the client time stamp is sending and this and that and it's it, you know if you've got a tool that takes care of that for you it, it works nice but 
I don't think it's something that's worth spending um, days refining. I don't like this halo that keeps showing up too. I mean, that's the sunset. Well, and it looks great over there. So I guess that's kind of understandable. I don't really like that effect on the back though. I like that, but whatever. So anyway, crafting. Uh, now we're looking at skills, crafting. So now we've got all of these over here, which means that I don't actually know how to craft any tailoring armor. Uh, tailoring armor, right? So I've got the simple though, and these will give me experience, right, if I craft them. Uh, no. Simple shoes used five. How come I didn't get any XP? Is that because it's simple? If I do a reading vat, I'm going to get... How come I'm not getting any experience for any of this? Uh, that was timber. These are stocks. I guess you only get experience for using... Um, the way that this is set up, I would only get experience for using thread. And I don't have any way to use thread. We should have bags as well on the skill tree, as well as underwear. This we want to move a ways up there. Hmm. I kind of want to say that, you know, I put this on the tailoring tree because it's involved in tailoring, but it's actually a woodworking skill, right? Mm -hmm. But so then the question comes up that these should actually be giving you experience, especially at level zero. Um, as should all of this, even if it's thread or not. And this just, the tailoring station should be woodworking. I put them all here so that they would be locatable under tailoring facilities. But, you know, it's just kind of not really doesn't really make a lot of sense there. Those should kind of all be under woodworking, don't you think? Mm. We've also got leatherworking station, tanning rack. Forge used to be under masonry because it's stone. Timber, lumber, lumber, smithing station. That could be smithing. But then that's a little weird. You've got to make a... Well, no, that doesn't, that's not weird. All right, let's move some of this stuff around a little bit. So we can get the effect we're going for here. Um, we're looking at skill... No, I want to look at item templates for facilities. No, is it crafting? And I might... Yeah, I think these are all set up hard-coded. Um, in other words, right here. There they are. And then in the item database, when we are setting those up, we're also setting them up in here, I believe. Like so. Basically, we just need to make some new items for those guys. We've got the enchanting table here. 
So let's say we bring over, let's see, tailoring first would be reading that. Uh, don't need that. Facility. Reading that. Uh, and let's see, we've got our descriptions available here somewhere. Don't want to have to rethink those. Uh, Reading that. Can change tier. Can be crafted. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. So we're going to have to, let's see. We want to keep this window open so I can access those. And we want to also open up the crafting recipe database which has this stuff stored in here. Reading that is 30 timber. And we're going to make that now be woodworking facilities. And I don't think it requires a station. It does not require a station. Just using timber. Uh, it should actually be lumber, really. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Lumber, and it does need a woodworking facility. From now on, um, can be placed on a building floor. Uh, not known by default. Can be learned via tailoring. Uh, no, this is known by default, sorry. Good, good. Uh, we don't need to learn these. That would be a little too much, I think. So, reading that, and then we've got the tailorings, tailoring station. This is going to be... Tailoring station. It says a loom. I better, better get an actual loom one of these days. Tailoring station. Can change here. This should be all the same. Known by default. Can be crafted. The recipe itself is going to be 20 lumber, 10 metal. This also is going to be woodworking. It's known by default. Okay, so now I can actually... I'm just going to copy these ones out first. So this is going to be Leatherworking Station. And we'll grab the old... This one doesn't have a period. Tailoring did for some reason. And he is going to be using the same thing. And we're also going to do smithing station. And He's got his own description. This guy uses 20 metal and 10 lumber.
Now, because of that, he's actually going to be a smithing recipe station. And he's not going to require smithing facilities. You just need to have the iron and the lumber available. Can be crafted, known by default. We've also then got the stone cutting station. Um, it's actually lumbering before that, but we'll go ahead and go out of order. Uh, this is the stone cutting station. It's a facility. Copy, paste, stone cutting station, this guy uses 20 lumber, 10 metal. Which means that he is once again a lumber, oh, woodworking. And he also needs a woodworking station. And last but not least, and it's slightly out of order, we've got the woodworking. Is it woodworking station or is it woodcutting station? Woodworking station. The reason I am updating these is so that I can easily manage their stuff here from now on. Because at some point I want to move everything into this system because it just works a lot better. Um, there's stuff that's still lingering in the old system here though. So, uh, woodworking station is the same. 20 lumber, 10 iron, woodworking facilities. Um, this is itself the woodworking station, so he's going to need no station to create to get everything started. So long as you've got the lumber and the iron. And these should all be interrupted prior to that. If that comes first, likewise with the description, if it finds, no, is this still at the bottom here? Yeah, this should be up at the top. See if it can find an item first. Failing that, it'll come down here. And now that we have removed all of this, I deleted this in some other places uh, in the live branch. Uh, we got rid of that long ago, and we just now uh, got rid of all of these. And we're in the process of still getting rid of these. I saved, so it's going to recompile, unfortunately. Um, there is no stone refinery, so we just need a tanning rack, sawing station, and a forge. We already did the reading vat, so let's copy off of that guy. Um, again, tanning rack, and that is no W. Tanning rack, facility, another period at the end here. Some of these do, some of these don't. Probably should not all. The, what was it? Tanning, whoops, tanning rack can be crafted known by default. Takes what? Um, 
I moved around a bit. There we go. Tanning rack. 15 timber. That's fair. 15 timber. And this is a woodworking dealie that does not require a facility because it's simple. It's just easy. Just put some stuff together. Could have it require some straps of uh, leather or something like that, you know, like some stock maybe, some thread. But that's kind of not nice, really. Adding another step and all that. Um, and then we've got the forge. Lunchtime. Forge, we're going to go ahead and... Sewing station. Oh, right. I was reading that as sewing station for some reason. S forge. Um, forge. Can't change here. Camera curve. No, my default requires, I believe, 50 stone. Which means that this is going to be a masonry skill that doesn't actually require anything. Uh, we should probably do a stone cutting station though, right? Um, but a stone cutting station requires metal, and you can't get metal if you don't have a forge. So we'll just go ahead and say you got to pile those on there. Looks fine, known by default. And last but not least, we've got mm -hmm, we've got our sawing station. Uh, This guy requires 20 timber and 10 metal. He is going to be woodworking and not require a facility yet because this is the first thing you need to build. And that should be good for all of that. So the point of that was to better base things off of their main ingredient as opposed to what crafting profession they're in. Now I can remove all of this. Chanting table is also 30 stone. We've got that. Um, this is being interrupted, right? Yep. So that's good. And um, also what that means is now we can go to player crafting where we do add materials. What is it? Add used. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Material. Mm -hmm. No. What am I looking for? Craft clicked get the recipe, check the ingredients, remove the resources, update used materials, add materials used. Isn't that what I searched for? How come I didn't find that? Whatever. Selection. I don't know why it defaults to that sometimes. So why would you ever want to search within your selection? Current document. Would have found it. Um, add material used. Now, um, this is how we generate experience, but for example, um, prof amount tier we're already practicing. Um, okay, so I guess it's actually prior to calling this here. So only if it's thread or if it's silken thread. Now, if the recipe profession is tailoring, so let's just go ahead and add
stocks to that. Because that's uh, the simple clothing. Um, is there anybody that... You, yeah, there's some timber stuff. So let's do timber as well. There's nothing that actually crafts with iron ore, you know. Um, and there's nothing that actually crafts with hide. But... I mean, it just doesn't exist. There's really no reason to add that. Um, I don't know why anything would. I'm not going to do it. And then stone doesn't have an upgraded version, so that should improve all of that. So basically, the simple clothes will now reward experience when you craft them. So you can now generate tailoring points by crafting simple clothing. And in doing so, you will now be able to unlock cloth armor rather than just know how to make legendary cloth armor off the top of your head for some reason. Um, you're now going to be able to work up to that. Was my whole intention there. Rainy fog looks a lot better. So, if we go to here, we can see that I've got the recipes here. And if I try to craft tailoring armor, I don't have them yet. Fancy pants is just a thing I made for testing. It's not actually in-game. But if I make simple gloves, now I should get five experience, which I do, which is good. So if I create some simple pants, um, and actually if I just practice with them, I'm going to get more experience. Uh, let's practice with some shoes, and I'll level up to one. And I'll be able to unlock one of these. So now I've got boots for thread, which I don't have. But I also cannot upgrade the rarity because I haven't yet unlocked uncommon. So that looks like it's all working as expected. Um, just to get some more stuff on here, and that kind of makes more sense. Again, that you don't know how to just make legendary cloth armor right off the bat and I want to add some sockets here um, I know of one at least be nice if we could make up some more tailoring recipes but then I think I'm just gonna add some armor sets to the back here You know, have them require some gems or something like that and just give a little bonus. Um, I don't have a town in this world, but the current options that we've got on the, for tailoring anyway, it's not on the tailoring tree, but we do have not skill templates. We've got the armor stuff here like mage helmet for example. These are learnable via the tailor NPCs and their equipment stats don't have any bonuses currently. I thought they did. Well, um, just different look for right now. Um, Honestly, that is the way to do it, because we don't want to force stuff to be better. But again... Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. It's kind of nice when you've got stuff. One thing we could do, I'm not sure that I like this idea, but... We could make like enchanted padding. So rather than hmm, you know, we've got all this stuff on the enchanting tree. Um I thought there was more than that actually. Oh, we 
missing some here? Did I move those to the enchanter? Let's take a peek at the live version. See what I'm getting confused about here. Skills, crafting, enchanting. Where did all these go? Did I move these? How come they're not showing up? It's got its own specific, there it is, um, Squire's Resolve, Crafting and Chanting, that's tier 7 right there I believe, yeah, tier 7, starting level equals 1, um, And those aren't showing up. What's going on here? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Starting at health, all these guys are not showing up here. What did I? Change. I didn't change anything that, uh, turns those off I've confused myself again that's what happens when you're in control of everything stuff gets confusing uh, skill tree skill buttons content are they hiding somewhere doubt it querying luck Nope. On the back. Everybody's there that wants to be there. Or these are kind of alphabetical maybe, but still I'm not seeing any hidden ones. Um, okay, so I need to look at this real quick. I need to go to lunch, but let's peek at this because that's confusing me. These should all be getting called. Um... Generate skill enchant recipe. Skill name. Skill name added. How come those weren't getting added? Today is a holiday here in Japan. So my wife is trying to get me to not work in the PM. I always work at uh, after dinner anyway. Um, but she wants to go somewhere for the afternoon or something. Um, let's see, enchant not found, what? Enchant database, player stats, that's something else. 
Minor luck, logging strength, querying strength, added, added, added. How come it stops there? That's weird. Skill template recipe generator 142. Enchanting luck. Okay, no, that should be good. That's... Oh, no, those are five, huh? Okay. But anyway, it did... It passed through, uh... Scouts tacked, but it didn't add it in there. See, it's not saying added. How come those didn't get added? Um, is that because... We made sockets for them. What am I thinking here? What's going on? Socket. Tries to add it. Gets to this point. Finds that the skill template, crafting skill template, already contains that one. But... It creates the dictionary from scratch in the beginning. Shouldn't be any lingering stuff being loaded. Scouts tacked. Um, is there any chance that that's being called more than once? Doesn't look like it. What's going on here? I've got kind of a funky throat thing going on too. Feels like I'm getting a cold. Um, hmm. Gets to here, makes it. But it doesn't add it on there because it finds that it's already got something there. That's strange. Um, these are hard coded. Right here. Uh, Squire's Resolve, for example, is number seven. Oh. Huh. Um, Enchant Database, Crafting Skills, Squire Resolve, is the one that's adding into the, it's using that for the key there. Crafting Skill, not necessarily the Enchant Enum there. Squires Resolve equals 41. Crafting Skills 41. Is there something that's overriding 41? Is the question then. Um, did we just... Who's 41 on the items? Metal helmet. There it is, probably. So these are interfering with one another right now, I think. Um, because I am now adding that using... The same number, even though these are represented using different enums for some silly reason that I made like three years ago. Because I got multiple enums saying Squire Resolve here. This one's 7, this one's 41. The actual socket template is going to be have to be new. And if I change this now, it's going to mess up all the enchants that other people are using. And if I don't change it, um, 
the metal armor skills are going to get weirded out, which are being added. Um, item template manager. Right here. Um, if it can be crafted and it's known by default, it gets added. Or if it can be learned, skill template manager generates skill template. So that's going to pass this into here. And it's going to use the skill based on the item code. So yeah, that's the 41 is being overwritten there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How to fix that? It's crafting skill. Let's see. So we've already got. Hmm. And I already changed some of these a little bit the other day. We don't want to just randomly toss a bunch of new numbers in there for anything that's already changed. For example, the alchemy bits here. Um, the suggestion being that. This is just silly here, and these should actually all be sockets now. Hmm. Well, could have some issues here. Numbers butting into one another. I am not seeing an easily solvable, easy solution for this problem off the top of my head. We've got two 41s, um, and we want to keep both of them. Then again, um, I could hard code in some shifts for the metal, the new recipes that I moved on to the skill tree, because those need to be crafting skills now. Uh, metal boots, for example. Um, that's really going to be the only option I can think of. When we get to here, and, or rather, when we get to here, we're going to need to write an interrupt. Um, if the item template dot item item code, come on, is equal to any of this stuff, um, we're going to have to interrupt it. And we're going to want to do that for a number of things. Let's see, the crafting skills. Um, these go up to 54. And then we're looking at item database stuff that interrupts that. Uh, down here, 41. Let's see, where's the leather helmet? Yeah, it's just cloth, leather, and metal. What about the facilities? No, we said those are all known by default. The only things we're adding new are these three sets here. So that's 31 through 45, which again is being unfortunately used right here. 31 through 45. So we really just need to set up a check here. And let's go ahead and say what? Um, don't really want to, again, just be tossing numbers around here willy-nilly because we're now adding other items on. Those are all above 300 for now for the new health potions and stuff, so that stuff's fine kind of just want to go ahead and say don't ever add anything to this anymore where is it this guy um crafting and enchanting kind of losing my voice <coughs> got this weird taste in the back of my throat hope i don't have something um I think 54 to 101 is probably open. Uh, 
That's a bunch of weapons here, so no, actually we might want to use those in the near future. Um, these go down to these guys, so 82. You never know, like I say, I might want to add these too. Let's go ahead and just give them a big number. Um, just throw them off the charts completely. Um, let's say if int item code is less than or equal to, what was it, 31? Um, just these guys, 31 to 45. Greater than or equal to, or sorry, this is, yeah, um, less than, and this is actually wants to be an and. Uh, if it's greater or equal to 31 and it's less than 45, meaning it's within this range, uh, we want to do something special. Otherwise, you can go ahead and just do that. Um, but in this case, well, um, mm, yeah. Mm, yeah, and then this is going to make use of that. So let's just say like here, we're going to do this is a little weird. Do I have to double cast this? Um, let's do int plus and let's just go ahead and say 10,000. Um, and this is an integer, so it's just I'm, I'm kind of worried like eventually at some point I'm going to hit somebody's modded data. So let's just add some really random number there. 78,500. Um, prior to converting here, so now we should not be butting heads with those anymore. Um, basically if somebody makes up a, a recipe and then that gets imported uh, via this, you know, the workshop or something like that. And somebody has used 10,000 as their starting point. Um, it wouldn't work with these guys because they're, if I made them 10,000, anything can't overlap one another. So I gave it that random 78,500 number. Hopefully it will never be used. And when we get into making the workshop stuff work better, it'll give a little, you know, heads up. It says something has tried to overlap with this item, not something. It'll it'll be able to say what it is, so it'll be clear to anybody working on that kind of stuff. Um, so we're looking at uh, skills for enchanting, and those are all back in there now. And we should still have smithing. Uh, leatherworking and tailoring skills available to us now. Cool. So and then we're going to keep adding on to here. I need to go get lunch though and I need to gargle or something. My throat's getting weird. Um, so anyway, f uh, crises averted. A couple of crises averted. Um, looks like that is working properly here and there. So anyway, um, I'm not going to be streaming PM anymore. Thanks for those that stopped by. Uh, hope should be back tomorrow. To and hopefully I'll have some stuff done by then.